In this video, I will show you how to make this dynamic calendar in Google Sheets. It will allow you to select a month from this drop-down menu and add events directly to the calendar through this event table. So if you're interested in a step-by-step -step tutorial, please keep on watching. I will start by merging a few cells to add the title to my calendar. In this case, I called it Event Calendar. Now I will add a fill to the surrounding cells to make it look more like a header. I'll change the text color and the text size and make it bold as well. Now in the J cell, I will add a year. For the K cell, I want to add a drop down, so I right click and choose drop down from the menu. This will allow me to set values for each drop down item. I'm going to add an abbreviation for each of the months of the year. Now my drop down has been populated with all the months of the year. I will now click the plus button in the bottom left corner to add a new sheet and name it events. I will now type the headers for my table. In the A cell, I type date and in the B cell, I'll type event. I will select A1 to B2 and right click to convert it to a table. I will select the drop down beside the date column to change the format to a date. This will allow me to use a date picker when I'm choosing a date. Now I will switch back to my calendar sheet. I'm typing the days of the weeks as the headers for my calendar. I accidentally added too much space in my header so I'm resizing it and deleting the extra space. The next part is the most complicated, but I'll walk you through it step by step so you understand each part of the formula. We need to get the months as numbers, and we have it in a drop-down right now. So we have to use the match formula to convert the months into numbers. As the first condition, we select the drop-down cell. Then we enter each drop-down value as an array item. The zero means it needs to be an exact match. As you can see, it returned 9 since September is selected and September is the ninth item in the dropdown. When I change it to April, it returns 4, and if I change it to June, it returns 6. Now that we've extracted the month, we can use it in our date formula. The date formula needs year first, then month, then day, so I'll select the H column which shows 2025. Then we'll use the match formula for the month, and we want the first day of the month, so we'll use 1 for the day. As you can see, it has returned the first date of September. To add a grid, I'll use the sequence formula and use 6, 7 to make a 6 by 7 grid. I'm copying this formula to a new cell to show you how the weekday function works. Surrounding the date with the weekday function will return which day of the week it is. For example, Sunday will be 1, Monday will be 2, Tuesday will be 3. We are subtracting the weekday function from the first day of the month to get the Sunday before the first day of the month. Subtracting it will return the Saturday and then we add 1 to get Sunday. We are using map and lambda together so we can apply the function to each item in the sequence. For each day, we want to get only the day value and not the month or the year. We can now see that only the days show up in the grid.
Now we will check if the day is part of the month so we can exclude the days that are not part of the month from our calendar. I'm copying and pasting our month formula, but if it's hard to follow along, I will leave this whole formula in the description. We are using if na so that the calendar shows nothing if there are no events for that day. Car and 10 in brackets adds a line break. We'll use text join to add all the events for a single day together with a line break dividing them. Now we'll use the filter function to find all the events where the date is the current calendar day. We need to select the range from the other sheet so we type the sheet name with an exclamation mark followed by the range of the events column. Then we do the same for the date column. We use empty quotations when we want to return a blank value. The days and events are starting to show up correctly, but it still looks a little cramped. I'm selecting my range of dates and right-clicking to convert it to a table. I'll select all the columns to resize them with a the right-click and resize columns. Then I'll do the same for the rows by using Resize Rows. I want the dates to be aligned at the top, so I'm selecting my table column, choosing Vertical Alignment, and then selecting Top. Now let's switch back to the events sheet to test adding a new event. When I select June from my calendar, the event has now been added. Let's add some more events to see how the calendar looks. And there you have it, the events have all been dynamically added to the calendar. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.